What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode. Now in today's video I'm going to be talking to you guys about the Accord and my engine mounts. So my car is a 2009 Honda Accord. It's got over 200,000 kilometers on it. I think it's at like 230 right now. And the engine mounts in this thing are the stock OEM rubber mounts that the car came with. So those mounts have deteriorated. They're not working as they should and I want to change them out with something better. So in the engine bay, you'll be able to find that in this specific situation, there are five mounts. So I have one of them found here. There's another one at the front of the engine. There's another one on the passenger side. There's another one at the rear of the engine. And there's another one that's underneath the transmission. There's another little one down there. Now, all of them are made out of rubber and the condition of them is, well, not the greatest. They're cracked, they're old, and they need to be replaced. So this test here that I'm gonna show you is very noticeable if you have a manual vehicle. So with the car in first gear, I'm gonna accelerate and then shift to second. Once I get into second, I'm gonna put my foot down and what that's going to do is gonna show you the amount of, well, basically delay in between me putting my foot down and the car actually accelerating. Now what happens is because the engine mounts are pooched, the engine has to torque before it can actually accelerate with the vehicle. Take a look at the RPMs when I put my foot to the floor. There's a first like little initial weight in between the engine moving and the car accelerating. One thing I definitely notice is that with these bad mounts, shifting is so much harder. It feels like you can't ever downshift or even upshift smoothly. So what I have right here is a full set of brand new mounts. So this is the lower one, these are the upper ones, this is the rear torque arm. So this one here probably takes the most amount of abuse. But the issue with this is that this here is just like stock. So you can see there's open cavities in there and this is made out of rubber. This here will degrade and deteriorate just like the ones that are found in the car. So what I'm gonna do to make these stiffer because I can't purchase aftermarket upgraded mounts is I'm gonna make my own. So typically if you were gonna go ahead and install a new mount in your car, ideally what makes the most amount of sense is to buy your own. This here is a Torque Solutions mount for my Mini Cooper. This here is made out of all billet aluminum, and this here is an 80 durometer torque mount. So this here takes all the abuse from a front wheel drive car. So when the engine torques, this here takes that abuse. Now this here is an aftermarket piece that you can buy and it's a drop in solution. So what I'm gonna do is modify these to make these stiffer just like a polyurethane mount. To change out the stiffness of each of the bushings, there's a couple different options that we have. So what we're gonna be using today is one of these products here. These two products that we have here are going to need to be used in conjunction with a caulking gun. So you're gonna squeeze out the product in here and you're gonna fill up each one of the cavities. So if you guys want a softer of the two kind of polyurethanes, you would use this product here from Loctite. If you want something stiffer, similar to a race mount, you would use this product here from 3M. If you would like as well, you can make your own polyurethane and you can also dye it any color you would like. So this product here is a two part product. You'd mix it together, add the dye in it, and then you would pour that polyurethane into the cavities here. Or again, you can take out the entire innards of the mount and completely fill it with polyurethane. Now, this route here might be very difficult, it's pretty messy, and it usually doesn't look good only because on the consumer end of things, we don't have molds for each one of these mounts. So, because we're gonna be going with a more DIY route, we're gonna be using the products here. All of these products, you guys can find in the description box. Let me show you how to use this. Because you can do this procedure where you're stiffening up each of these bushings, you can do this for used or brand new motor mounts. So because of that, we're gonna be starting off with first prepping each one of these pieces. So I'm gonna be using this product here from Meguiar's. This is a degreaser and inside of this bottle, I have a diluted version of this and this is gonna allow me to clean everything up and get it super clean. Given that these mounts are brand new, you'd think that there wouldn't be any dirt or residue coming off of the mounts with the degreaser. Now you can see that's definitely not the case. You want to scrub them down so the polyurethane wants to adhere to the rubber and the steel housing of the mount. After cleaning all five of the mounts, this is the dirt that came off of them. So if you're working with used mounts, spend a good amount of time prepping them before moving on to the next step. With the mounts now dry, put some gloves on because this part here might be a little bit dirty. So we're going to be grabbing the Loctite polyurethane that's found inside this tube. We're going to put it inside of a caulking gun. And what we want to do is cut the tip of here and inject the polyurethane into each of the mounts to fill all the cavities. Now it's going to make everything stronger, it's going to make everything more durable, and it's going to make the hardness of the entire mount harder than what it is now. 
Once the tip is cut, you need to be able to puncture the actual cartridge itself so that the polyurethane will come out of the tip. In order to do that, I'm gonna be using this tool here. Poke it through. So now that you see some product on the end, you can then get started with injecting each of these mounts with the polyurethane. So let's take a look at this one right here. So we're gonna inject the polyurethane into the cavity until we fill it up completely. So I'm just gonna keep doing this until the entire thing is full. So I'm gonna let this sit, and I'm gonna move on to the next mount. So you can see for this mount here that there's a little actual opening on both ends. You're gonna to wanna to fill this as much as possible. What I'm gonna do is fill one side, then maybe put a piece of tape on this end of it so that I can then flip it over and then fill it up from the backside. So after I filled the first mount, I learned a couple things. When injecting the poly into the cavities, I found it easiest to hold the tube in one spot, then force the poly to fill the empty spaces instead of just allowing it to flow out of the nozzle. This gets a lot of the hard to reach areas and allows for less air pockets to be left in the final product. Rubber gloves will also help you make these mounts look not so hack. Since we don't have any mold being filled with a liquid, the best way to make the final product look clean is to smoothen the top of the poly until it looks more presentable. Because these DIY mounts become functional when they're filled, the way they look on the outside will not really improve or hinder its performance as a mount. So for the price of 10 bucks, I can live with this kind of look. This last mount is the most important one for front wheel drive vehicles. When the engine loads or unloads, that energy is transferred into rotational inertia which puts nearly all of that stress onto this one mount. Over time, the rubber will degrade, however we can fill a used mount or a new one and make it much more capable to withstand torque. With these filled mounts, the power from the engine will not be translated into engine movement, instead it will be put towards spinning the front wheels. So after the mounts have been pretty much fully filled and then smoothened out with the polyurethane, this is pretty much what they should look like. So this isn't exactly a hard DIY. It is pretty messy though because it's kind of difficult to get the polyurethane down into the crevices of the mount. Um, but once you do that, if there's anything that splurges up, you can then push it down and smoothen it out like this. So this here is what I have done. Now, I'll admit, this isn't exactly the prettiest job. If you guys purchase a polyurethane mount, it might look a little bit better than this, but for the price of one of these tubes, we're supposed to get a heck of a lot better performance out of the mounts. So I'm gonna let this sit for a couple days, we're gonna come back, and then we're gonna install these on our car. Now, over a week later, these mounts have fully dried. They're cured, they're a little firm, they're a lot more firm than the open space that was in here, so these are going to act as a stiffer mount. Now, the one thing that I noticed with these is that these mounts that I bought are not a direct fit for my car. I thought they were, I went to go and install them, and they were not. So, what I did was I threw these out, um, I tried the Loctite inside these mounts here, and I tested it using this tool that I have here. This tests to see the hardness of whatever you're using in here. So this polyurethane has a hardness of 40. I figured this polyurethane wasn't exactly hard enough for my liking. Now this here is, again, just from testing and putting each one of these little beads down one day at a time to check and see how hard they would eventually get to. These are very pliable, these are very soft, softer than the regular rubber that's found inside of here. So instead, what I did is I used my OEM old mounts and I bought a couple new ones because I still need to use my car and I filled them with this 3M window weld. Now this durometer here is a 76 durometer, so this is a lot firmer and it dries a heck of a lot faster too. So if you guys ask me, if you guys wanna go this route, if you have bad mounts, go with the 3M stuff. I thought it'd be too hard initially, but in the long run, it actually seems to be pretty nice. Now, so given that most of these are my used mounts, the rubber that's found inside of here is kind of soft. So it's a lot softer than a brand new OEM mount. Now at the same time, if we fill up this mount with the 80 durometer 3M product here, it's still not going to make the entire mount an 80 durometer or 76 durometer product because we're basically doing half of the window weld and half of the old rubber. So I'm guessing it's gonna be around a 60 durometer mount, uh, but long story short, this is a lot firmer. So you can see that there is still a little bit of deflection but it's still nothing compared to what it used to be with just the rubber in there and the open cavity found up top. So I'm gonna be installing all these on the car. Now once that's done, we're gonna take this thing for a test drive. All right guys, so I pushed the car outside so you guys can get my first reaction as to how these mounts are in the car. So I have all five of the new mounts or the OEM mounts that are filled now with the polyurethane. That is the, the 3M window weld. 
So, here we go, let's turn this thing on. Ready? <laughs> okay, so automatically, right off the bat, you can definitely feel the vibrations through the steering wheel. Uh, so far, so good. I wouldn't say this is as aggressive as the mounts that I used to have on my 240, but this is a hell of a lot more aggressive than how it used to be with just the regular rubber. Yeah, you can definitely feel it. Vibrating a little bit. Okay, so good news and bad news. Good news is the mounts work. The engine doesn't actually move when you're shifting or when you take it out of gear or put it into another gear. Rev matching and downshifting is a lot easier because it's all more predictable. Because the engine isn't moving forwards or backwards, the car can be shifted normally and the transmission is where you'd expect it to be. In the engine bay, not moving. Um, let's do a little launch. So the car's warmed up. Let's see how it is. Yeah, you can definitely feel the vibrations through the car. Ah! That's what it's like to have engine mounts. That is so much nicer. So much nicer. After driving with this, with these new mounts in the car uh, for the last little bit, uh, it's not as bad as you'd think. So my initial impressions were, well, it is pretty aggressive. You do feel vibrations under 3000 RPMs. But once you get over that threshold, it doesn't seem any different. The motor stays in place, the transmission doesn't move, shifting is predictable, everything works as it should. However, everything's just a little bit firmer. So if you guys are really worried about vibrations in the car, this might not be the mod for you, at least using the 3M product. However, if you do want something a little bit better than OEM without spending the money for aftermarket mounts, you guys can do this and it'll save you a ton of money. You can go with the more aggressive 3M or the softer Loctite version of the polyurethane, fill your mounts and you're on your ways. Now this video has definitely taken me a long time to do because I've done a lot of testing for both of these products and I've ran both mounts in my car. Um, at the end of the day, what am I most happy with? The 3M stuff. The 3M window weld is by far the best, most durable and performance oriented mount that you're gonna find for a, a pour in or uh, a push in caulking kind of polyurethane. If you guys wanna find more information about the video or the products that I use, you guys can find more information in the description box. I made sure that I put a little bit more information in there for you guys, should you guys wanna replicate the same kind of thing. Anyways, guys, if you have any further questions, comment sections down there. You guys know what to do. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.